Welcome back. This is lesson five of Machine Learning Zoom Camp session three, and we will talk about uh, feature importance. So we will look at the churn rate within each group, and we will talk about the thing called risk ratio. So in the previous um, lesson, we did a bit of exploratory data analysis. So we looked at um, a global churn rate, um, which was uh, around 27%. What we can do now, instead of just looking at global churn rate, we can look at churn rate within different groups. So, for example, let's say we have, uh, let's take a look at our uh, our data. So we have different variables here, like we have gender, we have partner, dependents, uh, senior, citizen. So what we can do is, for example, we can look at the churn rate within each group. So let's take, for example, gender. We can see that... Um, Let's take um, all female customers. So this way we select a subset of uh, customers who are females and we can take it, uh, take a look at churn the churn. And for example, uh, we can look at uh, the mean churn. So this, uh, let's say churn female. And we can do the same with males, so male, male customers. So male. So this way we look at churn rate with each, within each group. And remember that our global uh, global churn is uh, churn. Our global churn is uh, yeah, almost 27%. So we see that uh, churn among females and churn among males is not so different uh, from the global churn. Yeah, we, we can do the same for different categories. So for example, instead of looking at gender, we can look at partner. So for partner, let's quickly check. We can see what kind of values are there. So we have customers who live with partners and customers who live without partners. So we can, what we can do is we can do the same thing, but instead of looking at the gender variable, we will look at the partner variable. So let's uh, first look at uh, people who live with partners. So for them, the churn rate is 20%. And this is actually, if we, you remember that uh, the, the global churn rate is 27. So this looks like it's, it's significantly less than the global rate. So let's say churn no partner. And uh, we can do the same churn with partner, of course. Churn partner. And we can do the same with uh, customers without partner. And we see that uh, actually the churn rate is approximately 5% more for people uh, without partner than global churn rate. And uh, uh, here we have uh, something similar. It's like 6 7% less than the global churn rate. And so for each of these variables, um, for example, for partner, we can see the difference between uh, global churn and churn within uh, people who have a partner, right? And we see that the difference is actually 6.5%. And the same, uh, so if we do the same for uh, no partner, we see that the difference is negative. It's almost 6%. So this uh, kind of gives us an intuition that uh, for gender, it doesn't really matter if a customer is male or female. Churn rate is approximately the same. So if we do the same uh, exercise here, uh, let's, uh, so uh, global churn, um, it's churn female. So the difference is tiny, right? It's uh, less than 1% and the same with uh, male. So the difference is again tiny, but uh, for partner, the difference is big. So this gives us an, uh, some idea that perhaps the partner variable is more important for predicting churn than the gender variable. This gives us one uh, way of measuring feature importance. So we can look at the difference. Um, so in this case, we look at the global churn rate and we look at churn rate within group. Right? If this difference is higher than zero, it means that uh, the global churn rate is uh, greater than uh, the group churn rate. And it means that this group is less likely to churn. On the other hand, if the difference is negative, it means that the group churn is uh, higher than the global churn rate. And uh, it means that for this group, they are more likely to churn. Right. And of course, uh, uh, here, what is interesting is not just the sign of this, 
because we saw that for gender and for the gender variable, like it can be positive and negative, but it's very tiny. So we are more interested in uh, differences that are larger. What is also interesting to see is instead of, so here we are looking at the difference. Instead of looking at the difference, we can also divide one by another. So for example, let's take uh, uh, customers without partners. So we uh, calculate the, we divide one, one by another. And we see that uh, if we divide the uh, churn rate for no partners on global churn rate, we see a number that is higher than one. And for people with partner, the churn rate is smaller than one. So people without a partner, they seem more likely to churn. So this uh, ratio is greater than one. So this is uh, another feature importance metric is uh, a risk ratio. So risk in this case is so we divide the group uh, group group uh, churn rate we divide by the global churn rate and uh, if it's um, greater than one they're more likely to churn and if it's less than one they're less likely to churn these two things the difference and risk ratio they are very similar, so they are kind of telling us the same information, but they are telling us it in a different way. So in case of a difference, uh, we don't see how much higher. So we see this in more like in absolute terms, but risk ratio tells us that in relative terms. So for example, for people without a partner, so the churn rate is 22% higher. And for people with partner, the churn rate is 25% lower, right? so 24% approximately. We can visualize that. So for example, let's look at the uh, churn rate. Global churn rate is approximately uh, 27%. So let's say this is 27%. So if our group is, uh, for our group, the risk, um, the, the churn rate is 28%, then the churn rate is uh, just slightly above one. Right, so this is, uh, let's say, you know, one, um, zero, one, and uh, this group has no risk. So the risk of churning for this group is, uh, so maybe not no risk, but uh, the same risk as uh, for the global population. Right? So they are as likely to churn as any average uh, customer of the company. But if we take another, um, but let's say if we take people with uh, partners, so for them, uh, uh, risk of churning, I don't know, was it 20? Let's say this is 20%. And we again compare it with uh, 27%. So for this, it was uh, 75, right? Uh, 0 0.75. So this is low risk. So this group of people, they're less likely to churn than the average population. So this uh, could be uh, people with partner. And then let's say we have another group that uh, the risk of churning for this group, uh, let's say 33%, right? Which if we compare with the global population, so for them, the churn, uh, the, the risk uh, ratio is uh, 22%, right? So this is uh, actually high risk. So for this group, the risk of churning is higher than for uh, the average population. So this could be uh, uh, people without partner. And this, uh, for example, gender could be any gender, right? So let's say gender male. Yeah, so risk uh, ratio gives us intuition how important uh, each uh, variable is and each subgroup that uh, this variable defines. By analyzing this data, we can already uh, understand uh, which variables can be important. Of course, we cannot. Uh, of course, we cannot do this for every uh, variable like that. To look first at all the values that this variable has, and then uh, you know calculate the uh, the churn rate manually. So what we could do is we can implement something like this. So in SQL. Uh, if you if you know SQL, so basically it says uh, let's group by uh, let's take our data, let's group it by gender, 
And uh, for each value of the gender variable, let's calculate the average churn rate within this group. Then let's uh, take the difference between this average churn rate and global churn rate. And let's uh, also calculate this risk. Right? And uh, we can do this for all the variables, not just gender, but for partner and so on. Right? So what we want to do now is uh, take this SQL query and translate it to, to Pandas. So in Pandas, this query would look like, uh, uh, so we have this uh, group by statement. So what we want to do is to group by gender. And then we want to calculate uh, the average uh, uh, churn. Right? So this is how we get the average churn. So here we actually, instead of um, just returning a series, so this is a series, we want to return a data frame. And the reason for that, because we want to add these two columns there as well. So there is no simple expression in pandas that would just add these two columns. So we, we will need to add them manually to get um, a data frame instead of um, a series. We can use this ag method, which is short for aggregate, I think. And uh, yeah, so it takes a list of different aggregations that we can perform. So for example, mean, and we can also add count here. So we can also see how many different values uh, for, for this variable gender are there. So we see that it's approximately um, um, the same for females and males. Um, so we, we get this, uh, this is uh, a data frame. So let's call it a data frame group. Now we add a column, uh, the way we would usually do this. So let's take, um, we take the group churn and subtract the global churn from it. And here I switched the order. So remember previously, uh, like I wrote from global subtract group. Here we subtract from group, subtract global. It doesn't really matter. So it just uh, switches the, the sign. Frisk here. So then again, we have the mean divided by global churn. And let's, um, let's do this. Let's execute this. And we see that, uh, yeah, we get all these values. So for gender, we uh, see for females and for males, what is the churn rate, what is the difference between this and global churn rate, and what is the risk. And we can repeat this for um, for all the variables we have. Remember, we have this list of categorical variables that we created in the previous lesson. So here it is, categorical. So what we want to do is now for each uh, column in this uh, list, we want to do this uh, aggregation. We're seeing categorical. Um, so now instead of gender, we replace it with C and the rest stays the same. And now when we execute it, so because this thing is in the loop, we don't see it. So usually what Jupyter notebooks do is uh, if something is the last uh, expression in the cell, so it displays the output, but here, because it's within the loop, it doesn't display it. So what we need to do is uh, we need to use a function, special function for displaying uh, things. It lives in uh, IPython and Jupyter used to be, uh, IPython notebooks. Uh, that's why the name is still there. So from IPython uh, display import display. And here we just uh, uh, invoke this function here and it would display it. But let's also add uh, print the name of the variable and uh, add a few line breaks. And yeah, so this is what it does now. So for each variable, uh, it does this analysis. So we see that uh, for gender, so the risk is uh, yeah, not really significant. So it's pretty small. Uh, for senior citizens, so for people who are senior, they're more likely to churn for some reasons. Um, then people who have no partner, they are more likely to churn. People who uh, have a partner, so they are less likely to churn. So this actually, this seems like a very good uh, variable in a sense that it has predictive power. We see that for this group of people, perhaps people who have no partner, yeah, maybe we should target them with these promotional emails. Again, people who have dependents, um, I guess their kids, uh, so they are less likely to churn and people who do not have dependents, uh, uh, they are more likely to churn. I think this is uh, similar to partner. Then phone service, uh, yeah, so people who have phone service, like it's approximately the same uh, churn rate. So here, this is uh, quite interesting. So I see that multiple lines, I think this is our multiple phone lines. 
So if people have multiple phone lines, they are less likely to churn. But again, this doesn't seem very significant. Uh, but people who have no phone service at all, uh, yeah, you see this, um, they become less and less likely to churn. Then internet service, yeah. So people who have no internet service at all, they are probably likely to stay forever with this company. So risk is super low. And you see this uh, internet service, no. So this online security, online backup, all they have this no internet service uh, variable because um, like for online security, you need to have uh, internet service actually to uh, to have online security. And I think, uh, yeah, you can take a look. There is a lot of interesting information. You can see that uh, yeah, without tech support, people are more likely to churn. And then there is one that is interesting one is this contract. So contract says what type of contract people have. So month to month, it means that they basically can cancel the contract at the end of every month. And you see that people with this type of contract actually tend to cancel the contracts a lot, a lot more frequently than others. And people who are on very long contracts with two years, yeah, the likelihood of churning is um, like super small, like it's tiny. Um, uh, so the risk of churning is like the, uh, the the ratio of people who churn in this category is like almost 3% and they have like super low risk of churning. So this variable is super important. So let's say if we see a customer who has uh, no partner, who has uh, no kids and who has a month to month contract, they're super likely to churn. But on the other hand, if we see somebody who lives with a partner, has kids, and who has a two-year contract, uh, we're pretty sure that we, they are going to stay with us, right? So we, this way, just looking at these simple uh, numbers, we can already get a lot of insights into which variables are important, which variables are not. Because if we see things like this, we see indeed there are some categories in which people tend to churn more or less often than in uh, compared to the global average. So this is the kind of variables we actually want to see and we want to use in our uh, machine learning algorithms. And yeah, so uh, here it's actually um, like we can see this for individual values, like for each um, for each variable, uh, for each value within this variable, what is the risk for this group? But it's nice to have, it would be nice to have a number that describes the importance of the variable overall. Like how can we say if contract is less important than uh, streaming movies, right? Or if it's more important, because based on this, we get an intuition that contract might be more uh, significant uh, variable when we want to predict customers are going to churn or not, but we only have an intuition. So it would be nice to have just one uh, number that describes the importance of a variable that we can use to understand which variables are more important than others. And this is what we actually will do next. We will look at mutual information that uh, answers exactly that question.